All right, so in this question, we are asked to do the same thing, determine if this is chiral, and if it is, determine the absolute configuration. So just like I mentioned in the previous question, if we have a dash and wedge at any particular carbon, you should pay extra attention to that carbon because it may be chiral. So let's do that. So if we look at this position, we have a carbon that's bound to a carbon and a carbon and a CH3 and a hydrogen. So right away we know the hydrogen and the CH3 groups are different. And now here we have to compare the rest of this, is it the same? So we have a carbon bound to a CH2 and a CH2, so that's the same, because remember, know that this is a carbon bound to two more carbons, so those are the same. And then we move again, and this is a CH2 and a CH2, those are the same. And then we move again, now switching spots, it's a CH2 and a CH2, so we come all the way back around indicating that these groups, even though they appear to be different, this is in fact the exact same molecule, or the exact same group on both sides. So there's a plane of symmetry across this carbon where these are the same groups. So therefore, these groups are the same. So there's two groups that are identical. So therefore, this is a chiral or not chiral. Both of those are acceptable. So this one can be especially confusing, I'm sure, because you have to be able to, again, it's all about the first point of difference. So we know that this is bound, this whole group here is one group and this group is another. So we know that this CH2, CH2 is the same, CH2, CH2 is the same, and then we get back to the opposite. So we have the exact same group on both sides, making this a chiral. Here we have another example. So this appears to have two chiral centers. So first, whenever we see the dash and wedge, we should pay extra attention to that carbon. So before we do that, let's just go through one at a time looking at these carbons to see if they're all chiral. So we have CH3, that has three hydrogens, definitely not chiral. This is a CH group. So this whole group here attached to this carbon is definitely one thing because that's definitely different than what we have the rest of it. So that's different, but then we have a CH3 and a CH3 bound. Those groups are the same. So this is a chiral, this carbon at this position. So we don't worry about that. If we look at this carbon, we have an OH and a hydrogen. Those are definitely different. And then this group is different from this group because of the presence of the chlorine. Right, We know that we have a carbon bound to a CH3 bound to a CH3. This is a carbon bound to a CH3, CH2, Cl. So that is certainly a different group. Then if we look at this position, we have a CH3, this whole group, which is different, and then this whole group, which is different, and then a hydrogen that's not drawn. So this is a good example to illustrate that the dashed hydrogen or the wedged hydrogen does not have to be drawn. If the other group is drawn, then it's implied to be there, since you can only have one dash and one wedge. So this appears to have two chiral centers, so let's apply our conning log prelog rules to determine which is the highest priority and to ultimately determine the absolute configuration. So we know that this is chiral with two chiral centers. Okay, now let's move to determining the highest priority. So we have a carbon, this is our center, that's bound to an oxygen, and then a carbon and a carbon. So our oxygen is highest priority. Then we have a carbon bound to a CH3, bound to a CH2. So right away, if we look here, we have a, this group is a carbon, and the group on the left is a carbon, bound to a CH3, so that's the same, bound to a CH3 up here on the left, CH2Cl on the right, so we know that this whole group is the second priority because of the chlorine, making it different and a higher priority. Then this group here to the left is the next priority because it's larger than the hydrogen, which is group four. So if we look at that, it's going one, two, three. That is counterclockwise. So it looks like S. And the hydrogen is in the back, so it is S. So we know that this position is S but we have to determine the other position. So I will redraw the molecule to avoid it getting too cluttered. OK, 
Okay, so, so far we determined that this position is S, just from what we just did. Now, let's assign the same thing for what's going on with this carbon. So here we have a carbon bound to a chlorine. Here we have a carbon bound to three hydrogens. So we know that this would be higher than this. And we have a carbon here bound to an OH and then more carbons. So chlorine is heavier than oxygen. So we know that this group here has to be one. And then this group here has to be two. Remember, it's first point of difference. So even though this entire group may not be heavier than this entire group, we know that this is a carbon bound to two hydrogens and a chlorine, and this is a carbon bound to one hydrogen and oxygen and another carbon, but the fact that chlorine is heavier than oxygen wins, so it has highest priority, then this whole group to the left has second priority, and then the CH3 has the third priority, and then there's a hydrogen in the back that I haven't drawn, that would be the fourth priority. But we don't need to draw that because we know that it's in the back. So here we have groups one, two, three, that is going counterclockwise. So it looks like S. And we know that the hydrogen is in the back, so it is in fact S. So if we redraw the entire molecule, we would say that this is S, S. There's our CH3, here's our OH. So we would assess both of these positions, S, S. Or we can simply say that this molecule is the SS stereoisomer. All right, here we have another example. So if we look at this molecule, we have two centers that may appear to be chiral. Now we need to confirm that they are chiral. So if we look at this carbon, we have a OH group. So that is different than the hydrogen that's dashed. And we have a CH2, CH2, that's the same. CH2, CHOH, that is different. So these are all different. So this position is in fact chiral. This is a chiral center here. Okay, and what about this one? Same thing, right? We have an OH and a hydrogen that's now a wedge that's not drawn, and then a CH2, CH2, those are the same. CH2, CHOH, that is different. So this is in fact a chiral center as well. Now we need to determine priority to determine the absolute configuration of what we have going on here. So I will redraw this to avoid any clutter. Okay, so here we have our molecule. If we look at the priority, we have a carbon bound to, or this is our chiral center. That's a carbon that's bound to it, and a carbon that's bound to it, and an oxygen. Oxygen is highest priority. Then we have a CH2 and a CH2. Those are the same. Then a CH2, CHOH. This is oxygen is heavier than one of the hydrogens. So this is the second priority, making this the third priority. So if we draw, if we look at the orientation of this, it looks like clockwise. So, or uh, yeah, clockwise. So that looks like R. Right, looks like R. The hydrogen is in the back, so it is in fact R at this position. Okay, now I'll redraw the molecule again so we can assess the other center. So here we have OH, and we determined that this was R. And then we have a dashed OH that we have unassigned. So again, we have an oxygen that is our highest priority because these are just carbons. So we have a CH2, CH2, that's the same. CH2 and a CHOH, this is higher. So this group here is a second priority. This group here is a third priority. That looks like S. It's going counterclockwise. So it looks like S but the hydrogen is in the front, so we have to flip it. I'll say flip because hydrogen, or the lowest priority, is in the front, so this is in fact R as well. So here, I will redraw it one last time. This is the RR enantiomer, the RR stereoisomer. R, R, or R, R, like this. All right, here is one more example, and we are looking at a Fischer projection in this case. So the thing that we have to identify for Fischer projections is you need to know that the vertical line are dashes, 
and the horizontal are wedges. So if we look at a carbon here, and let's just call the rest of this R that's down here, just for simplicity here. So the vertical line are dashes. So this would be CHO as a dash. The R group is a dash. And this is a wedge on the horizontals. And this is a wedge on the horizontal. So if we have our hydrogen or our lowest priority, whatever that may be, is on the horizontal, then we know that we have to flip the configuration because the hydrogen isn't in the back like we want it to be. So with that, we can now assess the number of chiral centers and if this molecule is in fact chiral. So first, a CHO group is an aldehyde, that is CH. O looks like this, and then it's bound to whatever it's bound to. In this case, it's this carbon here. The reason we don't call it COH, because if it's COH, that is like this, an alcohol bound there, which we don't, that's not what we have here. We have an aldehyde, C double bond O, in a hydrogen. Okay, so now we're interested, is this carbon chiral? So this carbon is bound to an aldehyde, this C, this whole group here, a OH group, a hydrogen, and then the rest of this junk. So we know that this is chiral because those are all different. So this is a chiral center. Then if we look at this position, we have OH bound to this whole thing, which is different than this whole thing. The reason we know it's different is because we have an aldehyde versus this CH2OH. Those are different groups, so we know that this is chiral as well. And same thing here. This one is basically opposite of this one. We have the CH2OH, which is the um, is different than this whole group up here. The OHH are definitely different, and then this whole thing is different than the bottom, like I originally mentioned. So now we have to determine the uh, priority of each of these groups. So if we look at this carbon here, we have a hydrogen that's definitely the lowest priority, and an OH that's definitely the highest priority. And then we have a carbon that's bound twice to oxygen and a carbon that's bound once to oxygen. So that means that this group up here is two. This group is one, which I didn't draw, but we know that oxygen is the highest priority compared to the carbons. And then down here is three, right? So here, if we look at this, it's one, two, three. So that looks like counterclockwise, looks like S but the hydrogen is on the horizontal, so that means the hydrogen is a, a wedge, so it actually is R, right? So this position is actually R because the hydrogen is on the horizontal, is a wedge, we'll say, right? So this position here is an R. Okay, so now I will redraw the molecule so we can assess the rest of the centers. So in doing so, we have a CHO at the top. We have this three cross fissure, OH on the right twice, and then an OH on the left once, and a CH2OH. Okay, and we already assessed from the previous assessment that this group is R. Okay, so now moving down, we have this carbon that's bound to an OH. So we know that this OH is highest priority because we just have carbons everywhere else. So now it's the question of, is this carbon or this carbon higher priority? So we have a carbon that's bound to an OH, carbon bound to an OH, those are the same. The hydrogens are the same as well. So then we have to move to the next position. We have a carbon that's bound to a OH and a carbon that's bound to an oxygen twice. So the up position is the second priority. This whole group up there is second, and then the whole group at the bottom is third, and then the hydrogen is fourth again. So here, this looks like S, right, because it's going counterclockwise. And because of that, the hydrogen again is a, is a wedge. It is in the horizontal. So we know that we have to flip it. So this is a R because, so it's actually R again, because hydrogen is in the horizontal. It's a wedge, okay? 
Now I'll redraw it one more time so we can assess the last chiral center in this molecule. Okay, so we've already determined that these two are R, are both R. They both look like S, but they have the hydrogen in the horizontal. So now we have to assess the, the priority of this bottom carbon. So again, we have an oxygen. That's our highest priority compared to all the carbons. We have a carbon bound to an OH and another carbon. We have a carbon bound to an OH and just that's it. So we know that this is higher priority up here than this because this carbon is bound to another carbon, whereas just this carbon is bound to just the oxygen. So therefore, this is the correct assessment. And then it's one, two, three, that looks like R, right? Because it's going clockwise. But again, the hydrogen is in the horizontal, so it's actually S because the hydrogen is a wedge. So this is actually S. So if you look from top to bottom, it is the RRS stereoisomer for this molecule. All right, and that is all I have for this video. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And if you have any video ideas or topic ideas that you want covered, please leave them down in the comment section below and I will get to them as quickly as I can. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.